Hello, ladies and gentlemen, this is Dan Ball, and welcome to another episode of the Wellness Academy podcast. On our show here at the Wellness Academy, it is my job to distill all things wellness and attempt to break down from all our different coaches, experts, and guests their wisdom and knowledge so you can apply it to your own life. Our guest today is Carmen Sturdy. Uh, Carmen is a self-confessed foodie and writer and host of the website and blog Every Last Bite, where she also has uh, an Instagram account sharing all of her uh, info, her recipes, etc., etc. And Carmen was diagnosed several years ago with ulcerative colitis. And whilst not being a podcast, delving into the medical side of things, we do discuss how she took herself from 30 plus tablets a day to zero tablets a day following a diet called the SCD diet. Um, Carmen was super cool to talk to. Um, I loved speaking to somebody from, as they say, across the pond in Canada. And yeah, I had a great time all round talking to Carmen. I hope you guys enjoy the podcast too. On today's episode, we also have a very special sponsor. At the Wellness Academy, we are part podcast and also part event host, part Uh, coach, part online coach, part nutritional advice, part life advice, etc, etc. And our first exclusive retreat is being launched January the 31st and February the 1st, 2020 at Cotswold House in Chipping Camden in the Cotswolds. For more information, please head to our Instagram account at Wellness Academy Social or at Cotswold House Hotel or head to them on email and telephone. The details will be in the bottom of this podcast in the notes. Um, The event is gonna be a fantastic, fantastic exclusive retreat across two days in the wonderful Cotswolds at Cotswold House Hotel. Um, Without dragging this promo out too far, please check out more info with us and hopefully we will see you guys in person me included, at Cotswold House on January the 31st. Let us know what you think. Like, share, subscribe, all the usual requests, and we'll see you on the next one. So, Carmen, welcome to the Wellness Academy podcast. Thank you very much for taking the time out to to do this interview with us. Um, I'm going to preface anybody that's listening with the assumption that you and I actually managed to complete this podcast, and we don't end up just shelving the whole thing because the internet is not on our side right now so bear with us anybody who will be listening um if the if the quality isn't perfect um i promise you carmen is well worth the effort uh sticking around um but (laughs) got some expectations to live up to now (laughs) why not i think i came across you carmen because i i did an interview with a previous guest, a gentleman named Richie Norton, and in uploading his podcast to Skype, it came up saying, you know, here's other podcasts you might like. And I'm pretty sure you were on a podcast that he was also on at some point or another. Um, and then I obviously tracked you down on Instagram, had a chat, and 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 here we are. Um, I'm assuming you've done podcasts before then. I have. I've done a few. Not a lot, but a few. I'm, I'm yeah. hopefully slowly getting better at them. <laughs> That's cool. And um, give us a bit of a, I, I had a look at what you sent me yesterday, day before, about what sort of got you into your, I hesitate to call it line of work, because it's a lot more than that for you, obviously. Um, yeah. But give us a bit of a background about what got you to kind of, you know, where you are now. Yeah, so I, um, I mean, I originally had a completely different career path. I was in investment banking. I was doing all that stuff. Um, and then about eight years ago, I want to say, I was actually diagnosed with an autoimmune disease um, called ulcerative colitis, which is a type of um, like inflammatory bowel disease. And I was put on so many drugs. Um, I think I was on t- 32 pills a day, which was terrible. And like my hair was falling out and I was not sleeping. And it was all just the side effects of the drugs that were actually worse than the symptoms of the disease um, itself for me. 
So I started doing some research um, on kind of other non-medicinal options. And I discovered um, this diet called the Specific Carbohydrate Diet that is actually uh, designed specifically for IBD and other um, um, autoimmune diseases. And I started following the disease, the diet. It's incredibly strict. It's um, like grain-free, uh, lactose-free, refined, sugar-free, no processed foods, no uh, soy. And I started following the diet and I was blown away by um, how quickly it made me better. Um, and I'm a total foodie. And I started doing some research online and realized that very, there weren't a lot of um, recipes and websites out there for the diet. Um, and so I decided to create my blog, Every Last Bite, uh, specifically for the diet. And that was five years ago. And now I do it full time and I love it. It's amazing. Yeah, you've got yeah. like, you've got <laughs> quite a large Instagram following now. I mean, I say quite a large following, like relative, you know, like, Caitlyn Jenner is currently on oh, yeah. <laughs> here in the UK and yeah. like the Jenner family or the Kardashians I mean that's a large Instagram following but for a lowly guy with like 450 Instagram followers <laughs> 90,000 people it's all to relative say is a is a large amount just out of curiosity like you've been doing the blog five years but I'm guessing that when you started it Instagram Instagram's not been a thing for five years has it um I I think I went on Instagram in 2015, I want to say. Um, and so um, I actually, I mean, I think I had a, follow, a following of a thousand followers for maybe two years. And then all of a sudden it just massively spiked. Um, I kind of discovered that there's other diets that were similar to the specific carbohydrate diet. And I kind of sort of started um, targeting those people as well. And that's just where things took off massively. Okay, so yeah. like first question that sort of comes to mind when when you mention about the diet being restrictive. Um, so I did I did a diet about ten years ago just for weight loss because mm -hmm. I wasn't happy with the way that I looked. Um, yeah, I used to look in the mirror every day and be quite depressed and mm -hmm. sad and and upset about the way that I'd, I'd let myself get out of shape. I've been a martial arts instructor since I was 18 and oh, wow. I was like an unhealthy out of shape martial arts instructor. So like that added to the whole, <laughs> like, you know, dealing with it from a mental perspective thing. Yeah. And the diet I did was quite restrictive. It was a diet from a book called the four hour body by Tim Ferriss. Um, and I lost like three and a half, nearly four stone in four wow. months. Wow. Sorry, what a four-hour diet. The, the name is no, very so the, intriguing. The, the reason why his book is the book. The book is called the Four Hour Body. The reason why the book's called the Four Hour Body is because his first book that gave him notoriety and, and and fame as such was called the Four Hour Work Week. It was a book about principles to reduce your working hours. So if you could outsource something, you outsourced it. If you could, you know, if you had a boss that would let you complete the work you need to complete in a five-day working week, in a two-day working week, ask them, complete the work yeah. in a two-day working week and have three days off. Or try and find yourself a job that you can do remotely. Do you know what I mean? So, yeah. like, let's say in an ideal scenario in five years' time, I get the privileged position that you've got and I could do this podcasting thing full-time, it mm -hmm. would be more like a four-hour work week yeah. than, let's say, for example, being a doctor or being a labourer or being an investment banker, for example. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, so yeah, totally. His second book was kind of... He's all about the minimum effective dose. So, like, what could you do that would get you 80% of the results that was only worth maybe 20 or 30 or 40 or 50% of the effort? Do you know what I mean? I, like so I, the sounds of it. <laughs> I was listening to something he was talking about on an old podcast episode yesterday that was I think it said that if you learn 20% of the vocabulary in Spanish you can get through like 80% of the conversation so you don't really need, I think but, that makes sense yeah exactly do you know I mean I like, think about the certain yeah, words the that are repetitive yeah um, but yeah his so this this diet was called the slow carb diet it was fairly restrictive six days a week but one day a week you had a cheat day <laughs> 
and that makes all the difference <laughs> whole nine yards right i yeah. used to go whole hog and wake up on sunday like oh yeah. like, what have i done to myself um but you say like this like what you have to do is strict all the time yeah so basically the way it works is i mean not to get all scientific but basically the way it works is you are your body can only digest certain types of carbohydrates um so if you the ones that you can't digest, um, the bad bacteria feeds on and causes a flare. So um, ideally, you want to stick to the diet strictly for two, a minimum of two years, and you should be in complete remission, and then you can start introducing new foods. But it is so hard. I mean, things like going out to well, a that's... restaurant to eat. Like, you don't realize how everything is marinated in... Even things like... Um, I mean, it's not so bad in... The, the UK I'm originally from Canada but like in the US there are things like their chicken breasts they like cook them and sh- they, put, they pump sugar into them and things where you don't realize how there's really even, even um if you look at the ingredients on M&S cooked chicken breasts that's a good one uh so like just cooked chicken from M&S it has sugar in it I plain said- no spices nothing I learned something similar to this when I was doing my diet. I used to, so I kind of went contradictory to a lot of um, general advice when you diet in that I weighed myself every day. Yeah. And I knew, like, I I tended to lose weight every day, like a pound or half a pound or a quarter of a pound or something every single day. So I tested things out. Um, Are you a a Nando's convert yet? I mean, of course I am. (laughs) Love Nando's. I tried um, the Nando's marinades for chicken mm. and wasn't someone that looked at food labels at this point in my life and had these like Nando's marinated chicken breasts, like home cooked, but marinated in their sauces and wasn't losing weight like for three days in a row, which at the yeah. time, was like, what, hang on a minute, something's going on here. And then, oh, yeah, first ingredient on a Nando's marinade, yeah. sugar. Sure. Exactly. Just, I wanted to find this and show you. This was me. Can you see that? Okay. Oh, wow, that's incredible. That's why such I a change. Yeah. So, sorry, you lost four stone in how long? Four months. Three, th- 49 pounds in four months. So, three and a half. And I, and, but I also lost a few pounds just before I started that diet by just sort of, I was actually kind of copying my mum and dad's Weight Watchers diet for a little while. It's almost like a that's- dirty secret, that is. <laughs> I won't tell anyone. That is um that is incredibly Yeah, bad. quite extreme, right? Like that that is was it healthy to lose that much weight that quickly? Well, I would say for me, yes. Because like I've always been, you know, you've got the three body types, endomorph, ectomorph, and mesomorph. Mm-hmm. I, like I'm the skinny one. I don't remember mm-hmm. which one it is. I'm the one that's like, you know, I've got the thinnest wrists on yeah. earth, like and cause my girlfriend's got bigger calves than me. Do you know what I mean it's, it's a she loves to point yeah. that out? Um, and <laughs> I but I had all my weight was here on my face, as you can see yeah. from that picture, uh, here on these guys <laughs> yeah. across my midsection. It didn't really go anywhere else, yeah. so yeah. I just did not carry it that well. Yeah. And, and you were not you're naturally meant to be skinny, so it's, I, it's much easier to lose weight that way when your yeah. body's meant to be thin. And, I, yeah, so it's just interesting that when the two things I just wrote down to ask you when you said that it's strict all the time. One, how on earth do you travel? Because I know that you travel. Uh, mm-hmm. I, like you just got back not long ago from some travel. Yeah, I got back yesterday, yeah. And um, second, it is how on God's green earth do you avoid refined sugar? Because as you said, it's in everything now. Everything, yeah. I mean, so that is the thing with the diet is is you cannot falter at all. Um, so, I mean, it's tough. It's a lot of like eating at home. It's a lot of also just being smart about about the way you eat. So, um, I have a fridge stacked full of food all the time and a freezer. So even if I'm like going out somewhere, um, I might eat a bit before I go so that I'm not ravenous. Um, yep. when you get somewhere so that you don't make bad decisions. Yeah. Um, but traveling, it's hard. Um, but it depends where you go. I mean, I think Europe is actually 
so much better than North America in terms of just how clean the food is. Like I went to Italy and it was, I mean, it's all so simple and it's actually also amazing how, how many restaurants in Italy in like small towns have gluten-free pasta. It blew my mind. Um, I was like assuming that Italy would be the worst place you could possibly go for stuff like gluten-free food, but they are actually so far ahead of the curve versus places even like the U S. Um, but yeah, no, it's tough and it's just being prepared. Um, and I mean, things like steak is like my, I mean, I don't know if I could do this if I was a vegan or vegetarian, but things like steak is always a safe, it's a safe order. Um, and like fresh fish and things like that. Uh, but no, I love to travel and I mean, I don't follow the diet strictly now, but, um, even when I did, I, you just make it work because I mean, it's, I love food, but there's so much more than just food when you travel. Well, I think like, number one is it's worth it's, I think it's worth mentioning that for you to stick to the diet when it's this difficult, because I, I, like, I, I asked for a long time, kind of the universe or myself or friends or family, like, what on earth am I doing wrong? Like, why am I not losing weight? You know, and I'm, I'm quite... <laughs> patience is not one of my virtues so maybe part of my problem was uh, I was expecting change to happen like that which it kind of yeah. does this diet that I did <laughs> um but you've obviously got a significant motivation to stick to it yeah the alternative is the is the resurfacing of serious symptoms from a and that's another thing that that's the whole reason why I started my site too is because um I love food and I wanted to show people that um sticking to a restrictive diet, you don't have to be an amazing cook. Like that's one reason why I think I my Instagram following has really grown is because I do a lot of cooking demos in my stories where I'm like, hey guys, this is like five simple steps, takes you 20 minutes, and you can have a delicious meal um that everyone, no matter what diet you're on, will love it. Um so that's kind of I just really like bold flavors and easy, easy dishes. Um and I think that's kind of a lot of people don't um, look at following strict diets for things like autoimmune disease because like there's no way I could survive on that. But um, it is possible. I mean, there's still so many. Like you, you can eat most vegetables, you can eat most fruits or all fruits. You can eat um, meats and things. There's so many possibilities. What are the obvious? What are the obvious no goes for somebody with a condition like yours, or if someone wants to needs to follow your diet, what are the big no goes? Like definitely stay away from ABs. so any any grain, so like anything with flour, so pastas, breads, um, corn, um, what else? Like potatoes, any sugar, more like dairy. It's limiting. I mean, it is really limiting, and this is coming from a girl who. Growing up, I was, I love cooking and I was the girl who was like hiding huge hunks of butter in like <laughs> dishes when no one was looking and then being like, oh, isn't this delicious? And I was, you know, Do you ever putting watch, cream like, into everything. Yeah. And <laughs> Sorry? Do you watch MasterChef here in the UK? Yes, I so do. Do you watch the professionals one? I, oh, I don't watch the professionals on this. So it's like they 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 do a sim they do this thing on the professionals where so the the chefs are Monica Galletti and Marcus Waring, and they always do this um this like technical challenge. So it's mm -hmm. obviously each episode is six professional chefs. So it's their chefing is obviously their job. So mm -hmm. they always start it off with going, "Our chefs should be able to do this," which basically means our chefs won't be able to do this. Yeah. Um, but like the amount of times that they make recipes and it's like just chuck a, a bit, little bit of butter in and it's like six knobs of butter. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm like, oh, <laughs> exactly. God. Talk about how to make something that could be healthy, incredibly unhealthy by just yeah. throwing butter at it. It's ever so funny. Um, I'm, I went to, I've done a couple of cooking classes with some like um, big London chefs and every single one of them always says the secret to any restaurant dish if it tastes good is butter like it without question it's always come down to butter so <laughs> we yeah uh, my girlfriend and i follow it like we we tend to juggle between getting gusto and hello fresh i don't know if you've heard mm. of these yeah yeah them. i have i haven't used them but i've heard they're both really yeah. good yeah really good and mm. um like i remember when i did the slow carb diet 
one of the things that you weren't allowed to eat on that was white carbohydrates or anything that can be white. So no sweet potato, no brown potato, no brown rice, no steel cut oats, none of this stuff. If it can be yeah. white, you're not allowed it. Six yeah, this, this sounds a lot like, that sounds a lot like what the my diet I think huh? so. Yeah. Um, and legumes become a big staple part of your diet yeah. to get calories okay. in because otherwise, you know, everyone's heard that whole thing of if you had 100 calories of chicken breast, it looks like like this. Yeah. 100 calories of spinach looks like this. And yeah. you can eat it or like, do you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, and I remember like eating black beans and mm-hmm. getting to a point where I had to like shovel them down with water because I was so bored of the taste. But I've made them on gusto, mashed them up with a masher, chucked some butter in and all that of a sudden. Good. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> that last, ing- last ingredient makes all the difference. Yeah, definitely. So um, what, on your diet, which one did you find was like the hardest thing to cut out? Do you know what? Honestly, so it changed that it's I think one of the things that I learned doing that diet and I've also done have you experimented at all with things like intermittent fasting and time restricted I, have, I mean I gotta be honest I'm not a big breakfast person anyway so I kind of like accidentally intermittent fast um yeah. but I mean I know lots of people who do it and swear at it well like so because because when I did the four hour body and, and like that diet changed my life like it changed my relationship with myself in a dramatic way like probably the most important thing to ever happen to me because I'm so much happier within myself on a daily basis. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. And it's like, I talking of Northern like America and stuff. Like I was in California about a month ago, which I know isn't quite Northern America, but it's, you know, it's more North America. Yeah. Yeah. It's North America. Yeah. (laughs) I came back and I definitely put weight on after. Really? Oh yeah. Just because I went, I went, I had everything that I wanted to have. and I didn't, think portion control i didn't stop I mean, anyone the portions out there are so much bigger than here and like, now that i'm back and um, i'm i'm fortunate enough that i'm away for christmas this year in, in a place where there's sunshine and a beach and i'll be very warm and, uh the caribbean oh. uh, <laughs> so i, I want to be kind of beach ready right and i know that i can kind of go back to this low carb diet follow it for three weeks and at least feel better than i did when i ate trash in america for yeah, 11 yeah. days um but basically i learned that it's your relationship with food which is the more interesting thing which if you commit to these diets you learn a lot about that and i did this so because tim Ferriss changed my life like he did with that book if he suggests doing something and the people he interviews and speaks to say that it's really good if i can give it a go i'll give it a go yeah. So I've experimented with and I've tried like 24 hour fasts. I've done 48 hour fasts. I've done wow. a couple of 72 hour fasts. I've never quite made it the five or seven days, which he recommends. But I suppose mean, that, that sounds insane. Like that, that yeah. cannot be. How do you function on day three and four? Supposedly, it's if you can get past day three, day four and five, six and seven are a lot easier. So, so it, you actually go seven days without eating. Yeah, well, one of the protocols that he suggests in his book, Tools of Titans, it does say that you can have um, MCT oil in coffee, a.k.a. coconut oil, a.k.a. Yeah. you can drink fat. So your brain makes use of that anyway. Um, yeah. I mean, I know a guy that did a 30 day water fast. OK, but why? <laughs> like, so unless the, you're trapped yeah. in a desert, why would you do that? So there's there's two things that he talked about um, in his books with different guests that appealed to me. One was supposedly, um, how how old are you, Carmen? I'm uh, thir- how old am I? Thirty three, thirty two, one of those two. Thirty three, I think. <laughs> supposedly, by the time you make it to, I can't remember if it's forty or fifty. I think it's forty. We've all got some free radicals roaming around in our bodies that could potentially become cancerous we like we've all got okay. them just because of the way yeah. that the human body degrades and then rebuilds itself on a daily basis yeah and supposedly according to one of the guys that was on tim's show i can't remember if it was dominic d'agostino or peter atia one of which or both of which are medical professionals uh, Dominic D'Agostino definitely is. He's a big keto diet, uh, prop- like a proponent of the keto diet. Yeah. Um, supposedly, if you can do a five or a seven day fast, you can purge your body of these 
negative. Oh, really? That's interesting. Free radicals. And I'm like, oh, okay. How, but how does that work? That's where this is where I suck. So okay. if he says do it, that I'm rub it, like no one ever listens to me. No one ever goes, oh, really? Tim Ferriss says, sure, I'll do that. It's just me that's crazy. Yeah. We'll give these things a go. But like both the slow carb diet and trying these fasts has taught me things like one, you can eat because you're bored. Yeah. Two, you can eat because it's your neuro association. So like I've got a neuro association now that I've been living with my girlfriend for let's say a year, where when we've had tea, my brain wants pudding. Even if pudding is just a, like one of these 10 calorie jellies that you can get from the supermarket. Yeah. Like my brain has a neuro association that I want pudding. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's just a neuro association that you can get rid of if you don't do that for three weeks. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. So, but the hardest thing was probably like, yeah, potatoes and, and bread. I still can't get over the seven day fast. <laughs> I've, never done seven, that, I've never done seven days, but I would love if you want to do it. To hear, if you want to do I'm it, good. Yeah. I'm good. I'm good. <laughs> I love to eat all the time. I continuously snack nonstop all day. I think I would literally ask like I last two hours, and that would be my fasting. <laughs> <laughs> you wake up in the middle of the night, like oh, just just some yeah, time. exactly. Um, and the, and the other reason was um, was like a, it's a stoic principle. So to practice poverty. So Tim Ferriss did a thing where he he put the writings of Seneca, the Tower of Seneca. He created like a, a free or like book, uh, PDF booklet that he gave away for free on, on a website, like beautifully made. Like they, mm -hmm. they just had to be doing it, gave it away for free. And it was these letters that Seneca, I think, wrote Um and one of them is, let's say, for example, what's the worst case scenario? Oh, like I have to go and I can't, I have not, I can't afford to eat what I like to eat. Well, if I'm already used to not eating, then it's less of a problem. Or if I'm already yeah. used to eating a little amount, it's less of a problem. So like my girlfriend and I have joked that if I was a celebrity in the jungle and I'm a celebrity, I would be all right because I already know what it's like to eat rice and beans or less yeah. than that. Whereas... Like people who obviously are used to four square meals a day or snacking all day, it's actually quite a useful thing for like mental strength just to go, all right, I'm gonna give it give it a go for three days. I'm gonna I'm gonna eat the bare minimum. I'm gonna spend five yeah. pounds a day on food, that's it, and see what's that see what that's like. But yeah. That's so interesting. No, I I should I wanna look into it because I'm I'm very interested with this. But um Titan's book is a really, really good book. It's really easy to read as well. It's just like he interviews different people. Yeah. And then he just a bunch of questions. So I guarantee there would be somebody in there that you'd be like, oh, wow. Oh, yeah, I'd love to hear what they say. So oh, cool. OK, I will definitely look into it. Yeah, but it is true, though. It all just comes down to like retraining your mind and kind of once you get your head straight, it's so much easier. Well, that's why I mentioned like that you've got such a big why to stick to what you do. Like mm -hmm. sort of takes care of a lot of the how, doesn't it? When yeah. That kind of why, if I don't do this, I'm going to be really ill. That yeah. pain is way stronger for you than, oh, like, yeah, I had to snack on a few things before I went out with my friends because I'm going to hang out and socialize rather than hang out, socialize and eat. You know? Yeah. No, it's so true. It makes it so much easier, easier when you're like, is it, is as much as I love cake, would one bite of cake really be worth it? No, it wouldn't. So why do that? It's, yeah. And then one thing you're saying too, about how you go back to the diet, it's the same as this, where whenever, like, so I, I eat and anything now, but like, whenever I'm like, Oh, do I, feel, I don't know if I feel so good. Then I just go right back to it, stick to it for like a week and then I'm completely fine again. So it's always like a great thing to have in your back pocket to revert to. What things, what things are your triggers now? Do you think? Um, I think, well, I mean, the big one is just stress. Stress is like a huge one for most autoimmune diseases. Um, so yeah, like I was working on a big, big project the last couple months and like, I'm like, oh, I think my stress might be getting a little out of control. So you kind of just have to like take a deep breath and really watch what you eat. And yeah, that, I'd say that is the biggest trigger much more so than, than okay. food actually. Okay. That's yeah. Well, they've done a lot of research now about the connection between your gut bacteria, your gut microbiome and the brain, haven't they? yeah like sleep mood and so on and so forth so it's it's not surprising that it goes the other way around yeah exactly no but i mean the gut really does 
control everything now. <laughs> the, the gut is the center of it all. What um, so? What are some of your um, heavy hitters then, Carmen? As far as recipes goes, what what are your what are your go to ones that people should try? What are your go to ones that you still now get excited to eat despite having had them God knows how many Ooh. times? So I um, I love just being creative and doing things that are a bit outside the box. Um, so things like I mean, cauliflower is my my. <laughs> My one true love. Um, so I I will do anything with cauliflower. I can use it to make bread. I can make ice cream with it. I can make, I make like a whipped cream um, that is made with steamed cauliflower. Like, please don't roll your eyes at me. I swear. I'm not rolling. I'm like, <laughs> no, no, I'm joking. Um, no, but it's. I'm uh, writing it's, this down now. I'm it's it's, steamed, it's cauliflower. steamed cauliflower. And um, you make. So there's, so there's a there's an ice cream and there's a steam cauliflower and it's like whipped cream. It's the same consistency, the same at uh, like flavor, but it's just made with steam cauliflower, honey, and lemon juice. It's crazy, but it works. <laughs> um, so I love like coming up with crazy things like that. Also, um, celery root or celeriac. If you yeah. cut it really thinly. Um, and then grill it, it makes incredible tortillas. So it's literally just like tortillas, but all it is is just a thinly sliced vegetable. Okay. So like, I love things like that are kind of my go-to um, recipes that are a bit different than ones you'd see elsewhere out there in the healthy eating world. Um, and yeah, so every, every um, I don't know if you've heard of Whole30, it's, it's, um, it's, it's much bigger in the US than it is here, but it's a diet that you do for 30 days um that is very strict where it's like no grain no gluten no dairy no beans all that stuff um and so every tuesday on my instagram i do a thing called whole 30 and 30 where i make a whole 30 dish in 30 minutes um and i have like a little timer going so it like actually shows i'm not cheating um and that's always something that like the followers really love okay. um and i make some fun dishes on there like lots of good chicken dishes and things like that um just kind of show that i mean a i know a lot of food bloggers kind of cheat a little bit and say it's a 30 minute meal but when you're actually at home making it yourself it's like 55 minutes um jamie, and it's good at that one jamie oliver did yeah, jamie it, oliver, and he's like everything's already pre-chopped and set up yeah. <laughs> Yeah, kettle's already boiled. My yeah, pan yeah, already yeah. on. That took ten minutes. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, exactly. Camera got turned on. You have to have like super speed chopping skills yeah. to uh, <laughs> to pull off the jamie thirty minute meal. It's insane. Did, like, did you finger. bother because they were still it was still quick? And the, the other thing I've noticed about some of his stuff, like obviously he's crazy passionate about food, but the amount of times I've watched something now and he'll be like oh yeah this tastes amazing and i'm sat there going Jamie, I've, I've eaten that mate and amazing you're being fast and loose with the word amazing there for sure but yeah he's a passionate guy and i think the uk loves him regardless i i really like his food. i think he makes some good clean his food's like relatively clean um just good food i like him i think it was it was so funny because he did he did 15 minute meals as a book and a tv show he did money saving meals as a book and a TV show. Yeah. So like two very similar kind of principles. And then he followed that up with Jamie's comfort food as a book and a TV show. And I don't know if you saw that. I have I haven't actually <laughs> seen that was, one. It was cakes, it was grilled cheese sandwiches, it was lobster mac and cheese. It was just it's like he went. Yeah, so I've done something for the guys that like to save money on food and eat healthy. Now so do yeah, it was so funny. But, but like, I remember if you can track down the episodes, they were some of the most beautifully filmed, like yeah. food, like TV that I've ever seen. It was so really? cool. Yeah, really cool to watch. I remember really liking it. Um, I, lo I love I do love how passionate he gets when he cooks like the way he's like oh and he gets so into it he's I mean I have to say out of all the British chefs he's definitely my favorite I'm not a Nigella fan I will openly say that like she's not my cup of tea but Jamie I love him I think uh, the only other I think the only other food tv show I really kind of got into was man versus food oh yeah of course so like what's one of, his name I can't remember his name I, but where he goes 
yeah he goes and does the challenges yeah he was the OG. so like when i one of the reasons why i was so bad in california was well i say one of the reasons it was it was two of the reasons technically was ike's place which was on man versus food san francisco that's where i went so i had to go there and it was yeah. well worth it and then the other was a place called Taqueria La Cumbre, which was in the Mission District in, in San Francisco. And we went there, my girlfriend and I, and we had like tacos. And it's just, it was super interesting to see the way that a proper Mexican restaurant does tacos compared to what we try and pass off. I have to say, like London, the two things, London, ta- Mexican and London, Japanese food. Not my favorite, but <laughs> guys do a lot of other amazing things. But those are the two that they just don't match up. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But it's, that was one of the things I think amazing about going to America is that you spend your entire life in the UK, or a lot of people do, and I'm definitely one of them, watching films and TV programs mm-hmm. and sort of getting to know bits of America or American culture. So to then yeah. go and experience it for yourself, it's just yeah, it was so cool. Where is that the first time you've been to California? Yeah, I've been. I've been, I've been into America twice, New York once, oh, and then California. Oh wow! So and when so I went to New York, I had to track down Katz's Deli, which was also on Man versus. Oh food. yeah, I was. And I actually ate. went there this year. Oh yeah, I, yeah I, twenty quid for a sandwich worth yeah. every. Was but it's a, like it, it's not a sandwich. It's like a huge thing of food. <laughs> yeah, it's a mission, and I yeah tackled it very well, if I do say so yeah. myself. Um, so another thing I was wondering about. Obviously, I think I find today 2019's opportunities for people to make a living fascinating. Like the fact that there's like I I teach martial arts for a living full time. And so I see a lot of kids aged kind of four and upwards and start to like chat to them about oh like so what 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 you up to at the weekend then dude or whatever and they're like oh so i was just watching youtube and i'm like oh, okay who are you watching youtube and they're like such and such a guy playing minecraft and i'm like right okay hey, those guys make a um, fortune they make in. so much money yeah yeah and i find it fascinating like there's a you can pay a professional fortnite coach i didn't know that that's, that's yeah <laughs> Yeah, a professional a career choice. So you, I think, are obviously one of these people that is really you've you've got a formula and you're doing an amazing job of getting and making it work. Like you know, this opportunity that's presented to you wouldn't have been available ten years ago or twenty years yeah. ago, right? So you, I'm assuming, do a lot with it to make that work. And yeah. I know like you know it's a busy lifestyle as such like not one that people can quite comprehend who work I job mean, I think that's the biggest thing is that everyone's like oh you're so lucky like you have such a great job and it's like I I mean I worked in investment banking I worked 12 hour days sitting on a trading floor like staring at a computer it was intense but come whatever five o'clock six o'clock I left work and then I came home home and I relaxed and I watched tv and I had my weekends like now I literally work I work from the second I wake up to the second I go to bed every single day if I am not out with friends I am working all the time and it is so exhausting (laughs) and the time you get off though is like here and there isn't it so like you don't really switch off so it's like i definitely don't have the hardest job in the world like fact like i'm not even going to try and pretend that i do but at the same time if i'm on my day off and i get an inquiry from a new person that wants to bring their child down to my class or i get a parent that's child is struggling and they want to talk to me about danny could you could you have a word with you know little johnny here like he, he's mm-hmm. he's being picked up yeah of course but like and it, you know you don't fully switch off yeah it's you really commit to it and i yeah. do that sometimes um but how does that like what does what does doing what you do food wise look like when trying to fit that into a busy lifestyle what's the I mean, what are your tips for success as such in, in terms of in fitting terms of what you do into a busy into a busy lifestyle like making it a priority when other things could become a bigger priority if you let them do you know what i mean like you've got like i say we, we discussed you've got a really big why but yeah. what the action points look like? Are you a big food prepper? Are you? Uh, uh, um, yeah, I think honestly, I think 
I think no matter whether you are just trying to eat healthy or you're on a strict diet, like meal prepping is not even meal prepping. I'm not a big meal prepper. I'm more a big, like if I'm going to make dinner, I may as well make double and then have leftovers for lunch tomorrow. Like I'm not a big, like meal prepping chicken, meal pre- that's not my thing, but I just like making like three batches of something and eating leftovers i'm a big leftover person that the leftovers are basically what get me through it sounds like an american (laughs) thing for sure like yeah based on tv program or film i've watched like there's a leftover like a leftover culture as such compared to my girlfriend can't stand microwave we're, we're used to having like bigger fridges like especially um when i first moved to london my fridge was about three feet high not not much bigger than my computer and I was in shock and didn't know how to function um so I think that's a big difference is like everything in North America is bigger you have more space you have a big huge freezer to store leftovers in whereas here like you just you go grocery shopping every day right sorry you live in London right yeah exactly in central London I mean space is at a premium for sure like you got to get the small milk because you can't fit the big milk in your fridge it's like every every single space in your fridge is a is a hot commodity so yeah so you're in the scd diet um, and it's something that it does cater to veganism and vegetarianism and so on and so forth but you're not i'm not no um i mean i know veganism is becoming such a huge thing um i'm but... not a vegan, for the record <laughs> okay. um, I, okay. I, like i'm not here i'm not gonna literally like surprise you 40 minutes into the podcast and start attacking You're like, you like gotcha <laughs> yeah no, that's not my thing i just was i when i was re- when i read your instagram um the other day and just like trying to do some homework before speaking to you and stuff mm-hmm. um i did notice that like you only get a small bio on instagram you don't get to write a lot about yeah. yourself on your instagram and you it says about it being I try to to cater to as many people as possible. So I am aware that there are a lot of vegans out there who are also, so um, the SCD is very similar to the paleo diet. So, um, and I'm aware there's a lot of people who are on paleo and also vegan. So I just kind of try to be inclusive to as many people as possible. Um, Because that is one issue with the paleo diet is it's very meat heavy. Um, So it's like a lot of like, meat is the focus of a lot of dishes so i kind of try to i don't know if it still is but it was, mass- it was massive with crossfitters for a while yes yes i mean it's not as big with i feel like crossfit is crossfit still a big thing i feel like it's kind of died down a bit hasn't it oh no yeah definitely definitely oh, okay. yeah yeah, yeah. So that's that's whilst i teach martial arts is like my my job and it's something i've done for a very long time yeah uh, if i didn't have a bad back right now i'd probably I would have sacrificed a CrossFit session to do this interview tonight. Really? But it's not a sacrifice because I'm not training because uh, my, my back is not great. Uh, yeah. But yeah, like, yeah, like I think it's still, it's funny because the only Canadian voices I hear on a regular basis, right, are a couple of Canadian CrossFitters. So oh, really? I, I keep having like a little inward chuckle to myself every time you say about, because about, I know about. from watching them that Canadians go about a bit more than I about. I, I think I say it normally. I mean, let's pretend like I. I, I hope I say it normally. I yeah, say a. a I say bit. a. I say the end of sentence. I go a. <laughs> yes, that's. That. I've been I've been here ten years and I've not picked up a single ounce of British accent. It is the most disappointing thing. <laughs> I've wasted 10 years. Why can't I sound cool like you guys? Hey, we. I'm. I remember going when I went to New York for the holiday and um, my girlfriend at the time and I sort of inadvertently latched ourselves on to this, um, this, these two couples, a man and his wife, and then another man and his wife who were from, they had that, like the, the typical draw accent. So I can't remember where they were from. In but Canada they, or US? In the US? They were from the US. Yeah. And they basically loved us because of the English accent and we love them because of the American accent. They just spent the entire day just getting a kick out of the other person speaking. Like, imagine so... how much nicer everyone would be to one another if we all just <laughs> loved one another's accents and enjoyed yeah. the person talk. Um, 
<laughs> what do you what you, you're not you're not a crossfitter i'm not i what? never really got into it what but, think? but i totally agree though with what you say in terms of like I, there's a strong connection between paleo and crossfit mm. but you know, it's not really i'm more of like a runner i love running um, you look I, you look like you, i was gonna say running that was gonna be really? my good yeah, yeah, yeah. You're, and with a night jumper on, and I know. I, I, I thought she looks like she's this just. This was a bit deceiving. Run. This is a bit deceiving, but yeah. <laughs> I mean, I'm not that big runner, but no, I do like running. I'm lucky enough to live by a park, so <laughs> I love just like getting outside and and running whenever I can. I'm not a I'm not a big gymmer. Okay. It, I stare at the clock and it's it's painful, but no, I, I love getting outside and running. I'm trying. Like, that's one of the reasons why I love CrossFit because. Um, the community aspect mm -hmm. um, and it's interesting because i'm i'm reading sapiens um but i can't remember the author's name is it yuval nari or something like that um it's basically a history of humankind and okay. it's discussing the idea that one of the things that basically made homo sapiens the dominant force on planet earth is our ability to bullshit basically and lie and create fiction and the I mean, I kind of get that. <laughs> yeah, it's like, but it's but like I've noticed it as a positive. For example, I can go anywhere on planet Earth, and if I find a CrossFit gym, I can walk it in and I can make a friend, and like someone will be cool to you because yeah. we all like it. Like CrossFit's been called a cult, and yeah. it does that cult-like experience about it. I mean, I've drank the Kool Aid, the CrossFit Kool Aid, so I'm not going to certainly say anything negative about it, but. um yeah, it's, it's That's so uh, interesting. Like, so where, how long have you been doing CrossFit for? I, I did it. So one of the things that was really cool for me when I lost all my weight before is I could all of a sudden, I could do a pull up and oh. I could do a body weight dip and mm -hmm. I could do a push up because I wasn't trying to shove around. Not less, the body. Not less weight I, to do it with, yeah. Yeah, and I tried out a CrossFit gym and one of the things that people love to throw at CrossFit is that mm -hmm. a lot of people get injured and I got injured and at the yeah. time had to sacrifice CrossFit but got back into it again like three years ago um I started to put some weight back on because I got like that kind of comfortable relationship weight gain thing going on for a little while and arrested it with some personal training with a lady named Georgie Georgie Gabriel shout out Georgie on the podcast <laughs> she's uh do a little bit of a plug here because you should check her out Carmen she's on Instagram as the hench yogi the so hench she's yogi, yoga okay. But she's also like stronger than I am by quite oh, a stretch. Cool. And yeah, getting back into CrossFit, again, it, it changed my life. Um, yeah. So not doing it at the minute. Fair few little niggles have really, really caught up with me. Um, but yeah, I'm excited to get back into it when I no longer. I, I think I have like, I played soccer or football for um, a really long time. And I just, sorry. I said you're in England now. Call it what it <laughs> yeah, is. Yeah, exactly football and um I really I got really bad knees from it and I feel like CrossFit is not good on the knees like I just watching the videos the way they do those lifts and I just how's it going I, I, I'm in pain <laughs> watching it thinking of the amount of pressure on their knees and how they're about to buckle do you know what it is like so there's a guy that um fingers crossed he is scheduled to come on the podcast with me in January in the new year mm -hmm. a gent named Kelly Starrett um he's got a famous CrossFit gym in San Francisco. It's one of the other things that I was super excited about going to see when I went. And long story short, you know, like football will be bad on your knees because yeah. you're probably moving incorrectly and you're not like the same way that like there's no bigger sport on earth with a higher injury rate than running. Like running has the highest injury rate of any sport on planet earth. I didn't know that. But it's because like, think about when you go for a run, mm -hmm. On a scale of like one to ten, ten being you do it every time, one being never, how often do you warm up before you go for a run? Never. <laughs> Absolutely never. How often Not do you cool, how often do you cool down after you've been for a run? I mean, what do we classify a cool down as? With like walking from no, no, my no, no, sidewalk like into my proper, focused, organized cool down that involves never. stretching work yeah no, I don't, uh, I'm not a big stretcher <laughs> <laughs> how often would you say that you've been for a run and been and had like a bit of a twinge or something but you just run through it and it's fine uh when you get into your run and you get into your stride you feel fine I feel like I have all the wrong answers for this <laughs> so, so Kelly Starrett did a book called uh, ready to run 
which mm. was about like different mobility things that you could do to basically make sure that you don't have all that crap going on. And yeah, that's I, I, I fully believe that the reason why I've got a back injury is because I got, I mean, like my posture in this freaking picture. Look at me. Oh, like, I know. Honestly, like I, I have back issues too, just from sitting in a chair. Like it is the yeah. worst. Yeah. Shoulders back, shoulders back. I know I'm trying now because I've just pointed out. So there'll be some eagle eyed person watching going, yeah, that guy sucks at sitting down. Um, but yeah, it is what it is. So yeah. I mean, that is the problem. Like all, everyone has desk jobs now and you just, all you do is sit in a chair hunched over. And I remember I went to a chiropractor recently and she's like, how often do you actually look directly up above you? And I was like, because you get a tight gear. Like, yeah, exactly. Like, yeah. So you're constantly doing this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. There's I a guy who looked up like once in the last month, maybe. And she's like, you have to do it regularly mm-hmm. every day because you're not meant to just be staring down all the time. Supposedly, like, so there's a gentleman named Sebastian Kane, another former guest on the podcast. That you again, you should 100% check out his interview. Okay. Yeah. Um, he was talking to me about um, posture, and I can't remember what, but a certain amount of head tilt, so your head being forwards, can create depression. It can create anxiety, like all this crazy stuff. That's like, wow, okay. And Seb's got all of the qualifications to back up what he says. Like he's a neuropsychologist, a kinesiologist, a sports therapist, nutritionist, personal trainer. The list goes on. Like, yeah. Big I mean, it's am- and, and the problem is, like, especially on your phone, like I notice when I'm on my phone, I just, my posture is. Who does this? Yeah, exactly. It's this, isn't it? Like head down and, and the way you hold it, like in front of you, your shoulders are slumped. It's awful. Death yeah. bound is kelly starrett's book like the that, desk, that, desk bound yeah yeah all about mobility work to do for people who sit down too much so have you ever heard of the couch stretch no <sighs> promise me something i'm learning so many things today this is awesome. give, give the couch stretch a go like youtube it and okay, please yeah. message me and tell okay. me how you feel <laughs> okay. i'm excited <laughs> will it make my back better yeah because it sorts your hip flexors out if you do it okay it's one of the most painful that. stretches you'll have ever done in your life. So good luck. Oh, okay. Good, good sales Talk job. To me now. You're on, like, you're on video. Everyone's heard this. <laughs> um, okay, I'll try. <laughs> as we, as I think about kind of wrapping things up for us, because I'm conscious of, we've been on this 50 minutes now. Yeah, okay. That's, that's a good sign. Fun, right? Um, I normally ask people the same kind of questions towards the end, just to sort of tie things in and hopefully find out some, some sort of like tidbits from people. Um, from as far as you look I like I, I know I'm only seeing you on this this small screen of mine right but you yeah. look to be a fairly healthy young lady like I wouldn't have said you were 33 um Egg. Got, all, I like you but highlighted the podcast right there <laughs> all the signs of looking like you're doing well obviously the diet's gonna help with that for sure um, yeah. you mentioned about running is there anything else that you value you to take care of yourself physically outside of what we've talked about today? Um, I mean, for me, the big things are, I am such a, I don't know if it's answer, but I'm such a big advocate of sleep. I think for me, like good sleep is the number one, I mean, other than eating healthy, the number one thing for me, it makes such a difference. How do you, what do you, what's, what's your tips for good sleep? Like what things work well for you? I have had sick issues in the past. Um, right now, I'm going through a good spell, so fingers crossed. But Which I think that, that it, yeah, because honestly, there is nothing worse than like the 3 a.m. wake up. Oh, it's terrible. Um, for me, I think it, it, it like starts like an hour before you go to bed, and just like I have sleepy time tea, and just kind of getting into like the the mindset. And I try not to look at my phone before I go to bed too. That's a big one. Um, but yeah, I mean, sleep is, it makes a world of difference for me. Is there anything that you do with the travel? Like, cause, so I experienced like legit jet lag for the first oh. time in my life going to California. I am not good at long haul travel. Like yeah. it, was, it was, it was so bad. So I'm bad. From, I'm from Vancouver. So we're on the same time zone as California. And so I go home like a few times a year and what, it, do you do? It is, what do you do to try and help? 
Um, I mean, I know it's not bad to, it's bad to say, but like sleeping pills make all the difference to me when I do that because um, otherwise, like your whole trip is ruined. It's the worst. Um, yes. And just not sleeping on the flight there, like trying to stay awake going there. And ours was a day flight. And so yeah. um, we left the UK at 11 got to California, to San Francisco, for what was 10 p.m. In, into yeah. my body, but 2 p.m. in California. Yeah. And I was on the sofa from, like, 6.30 yeah. with my girlfriend and her auntie, like, Dan, stay awake, Dan, stay awake, for, like, an hour. Yeah. But I was like, do you know what? I don't even care what time I'm awake in the morning. I'm going to bed. Yeah. And it was 3 a.m. and I was you, you, you can't wait. Yeah. CrossFit at 5 a.m. CrossFit at 5 a.m. Carmen. Wow. Like That's it felt like a day to me. I was yeah. wide awake. All these people coming in like, oh. And I was like, yeah, fine. why aren't you awake? What's wrong with you? Come on, let's go. Train. And it's like that, that's actually my biggest thing is that you have you have to like set a 10 p.m time of when you actually go to sleep and you like you better be outside doing jumping jacks if you need to like do whatever you can to make it to 10 p.m um and then coming back too is the worst i find coming back like I'm sorry. I, I, found that same, I found that way easier oh did you oh, yeah, yeah thank god back. yeah uh, but yeah i know it is it is so tough and i've been doing this now for 10 years going back and forth and it never gets easier did you come here for the um, banking job. No, so I actually came here right after I graduated university just to kind of check things out for two months um, with a friend. And I was like, that's really great. We'll, we, uh, we'll hang out in London for two months, do the traveling. And then I was like, well, actually, I kind of like it here. Maybe, maybe I'll stay. So. I have no idea why you choose London than Canada, but, you know, whatever. Like, grass is always green on the other side and all that, I guess. Um, and the, biggest, the biggest thing is travel. Like, traveling here is amazing. Like, from Vancouver, there's there's not much around you. Like, everything is, like, a three-hour flight. So, here, I mean... Yeah, that's a fair point. Places you can go. Um, same kind of question, but, like, for mental health. Like, you know, is there anything that you do to look after yourself? You know, you're, you're obviously super busy trying to find ways to prioritize everything like it can be difficult for people to switch off um it can be difficult for people to separate work from life you know lots of people identify themselves as what they do for a job rather than you know stuff outside of that and you know mental health is a big thing now not because i think people are suffering more or suffering less but i think it's because people are willing to talk about it more yeah and you know, I'm sure when you were going through the worst parts of your treatment and mm -hmm. your symptoms, that had to be something that was challenging for... Honestly, I think whenever I get a lot of messages from people who have been recently diagnosed with Crohn's disease or UC and they're, they ask for advice, and my number one piece of advice is always don't go down the dark hole of Google because um, there's like chat rooms and it gets so depressing and so dark. And one thing you realize is that you go on these message boards of people that are so sick and you realize the people on these boards are the ones who are in their flair and really suffering. And the other 90% of the people with the disease are out living their lives in remission, doing great. But you, at the time you're like, oh my God, it's the end of the world. Like it's all over. Um, so yeah, I mean, for me, I was, I became, I was very unhappy when I was first diagnosed because of all the stuff I was reading online. Um, so that's my number one advice for anyone. What was the turning point for you when you were like, cause obviously it must've taken a lot of mental strength to ignore the doctors. Um, I, I think... would say I ignored the doctors. I would say that I, I mean, you always have to listen to the doctors, but, um, I, I, um, I don't know. I just, I was ready to try. I'm always willing to try something new. Um, but yeah, I, I think, I think like that the internet. Later on tonight. Sorry? Like the couch stretch later on tonight. Something new. I'm glad that you brought that up. <laughs> oh God, what am I signing myself up for? This is so concerning. <laughs> um, so how do you, 
and what's the, what's the main thing that you think you do then for balance then, Carmen? You know, overall trying to stay level headed with everything. I mean, I mean, at the moment, in terms of um, in terms of like work life balance, I think I have a horrible balance right now. So that's definitely something I'm going to work on for 2020. But um, I am I'm, I'm very good at not taking things personally, and I think that's one thing with social media and everything. You just got to kind of brush it off because people there's so many me I get so many mean messages about the most really? ridiculous things on social media. Like you someone will comment. Instagram feed is the majority just beautiful I'll, looking I'll, I'll people. Get, I'll people get say. What about me? About like my um, like oh, you need to get a manicure. Your voice is really annoying. Things like that, and I'm like, so well, you just yeah, when I did see your nails, Carmen, I was thinking, you know. <laughs> I know that's why I have my arms crossed. So you can't, <laughs> um, no, but just think like people just pick up the smallest little thing, and you just after all, you just gotta learn to brush it off. And I think that is one thing that's really dangerous about social media is if you don't have confidence, it can really beat you down. Mm. Um, so yeah, I think not taking things seriously, and also for me, just getting outside and getting fresh air and going for a run, no matter like it just clears my head and gets me in such a good mental. State. So that's like one of my go-to things. Whenever I'm feeling overwhelmed, I just take like a 30-minute break, go for a quick run, and you come back and you just feel good as new. Cool. Yeah. So, last question. Where can or where should people stay up to date with Calm and Sturdy, aka every last bite? What what where would I where would we direct people to moving on from listening to this today? So you can head to my website, www.everylastbite.com or to my Instagram at everylastbite underscore um, to check out lots of healthy recipes. Cool. I would probably say this is the most fun I've had talking to somebody since I've been doing these podcasts. You've been oh, right. Okay. Really, so really good you. And God knows what will happen in post edit production maybe this whole thing is a write off because i haven't <laughs> had phones for the first time exactly probably like only me talking to, to complete silence <laughs> but the internet did work for an hour so we should yeah. be grateful for that thanks so much for coming on it was so great to talk to you thank you for having me this is dan ball from wellness academy i really hope you enjoyed this podcast Please subscribe on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you're listening right now. You'll find a link on the episode notes. Just tap or swipe over the cover art. You'll also see some offers from our sponsor, Litchfield Apart Hotel. Find them at litchfieldaparthotel.com, and we hope you'll support our show by supporting them. If you like what you've heard, we'd love it if you could give us a five-star rating and tell your friends how to subscribe. Another way to support us is to answer a short survey at yourwellnessacademy.co.uk forward slash survey and tell us what wellness topics you'd like to hear about. I'm your host, Dan Ball. Our producer is Scott Towns, created by our executive producer, Ben Heathcote, for Wellness Academy.